بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today the lecture is about disturbance of cognition The objectives of this lecture is to recognize the pathophysiology and the clinical features of aphasia to recognize the pathophysiology and the clinical features of dementia and to list the reversible and irreversible causes of dementia Language is a set of symbols known as words that are controlled in their interrelationship by perception, production, and central, central processing roles. Language consists of semantics, which is mean meaning of the word, phonology, sound of the words, and syntax, the roles of the grammar. Speech is a mode of is a mode of communication by reshaping thought and experiences into symbols which stand for their meaning. It is a neuromechanical process of the actual production of the meaningful symbols. What about the physiology? We have the Wernicke area and Broca's area and the arcuate fasciculus. The neural substrate of language is composed of distributed network centered in the dominant hemisphere. The, Wernicke, the Wernicke's area include, includes the posterior third of the superior temporal gyrus. An essential function of Wernicke is to transform sensory inputs into their neural world representation so that those can enter the distributed associations that lead to meaning. The anterior pole of the language network as Broca's area includes the posterior part of the inferior frontal gyrus. An essential function of this area is to transform neural world representation into their articulatory sequences so that the words can be expressed in the form of spoken language. The sequencing, the sequencing function of the Broca's area also appears to involve the ordering of the words into sentences so that the resulting statement has meaning appropriate syntax which means the grammar. Wernicke's and the Broca's area are interconnected with each other by the arcuate fasciculus. So from this slide and this shape you know that the Wernicke area transform impulses via arcuate fasciculus into the Broca's area and the this need that there is an primary auditory area which is intact and for hearing taban and need an uh, sorry need a good visual cortex fun good functioning visual cortex to make the vernicke area functioning يعني عرفتوا أنا شو أقصد Wernicke area to transform impulses to the Broca area need good visual cortex يعني need intact vision and need good primary auditory area يعني need good hearing speech impairment divided into two parts Aphasia, which is a disorder of symbolic action of speech. Second, defects of speech production, which subdivided into dysarthria and dysphonia. Dysarthria is the impairment of articulation, while dysphonia and aphonia are disorders of the function of the larynx, in which phonation is lost even though articulation may be preserved. This, the dysfunction may be caused by any disease of the larynx. The clinical examination of the speech should include the assessment of first spontaneous speech, comprehension of speech, repetition, writing, reading, and naming. What about spontaneous speech? Spontaneous speech is described as a fluent if it is maintain appropriate phrase length and melody 
If the patient appears to be understanding but is unable to speak, ask if he has difficulty in finding the right words. Spontaneous speech may contain abnormal finding. Paraphasia is a substitution of words. Paraphasia are either semantic, means verbal paraphasia, or phonemic, means literal paraphasia. Verbal or semantic, the example, the patient can say cat for dog, while phonemic literal paraphasia is, is a substitution of one sound for another, like green for green. So, the semantic is substitution of one word for another, cat for dog, while phonemic is substitution of one sound for another. Neologism are new words that make no sense. Uh, their use may be considered type of paraphrase or word substitution, like using word from which do not exist. Jargoning speech is affluent paraphrasic output with many phonemic substitutions in a sentence. Circumlocution is the using a long sentence to overcome the failure to find a particular word. Like the patient said, the thing for writing for a pencil. So he using long sentence to overcome the failure to find word of pencil. Echolalia is a repetition almost automatically of words or phrases here. The assessment of comprehension. First, give a simple command to the patient without talking, of course. Or th that's to say, come, uh, ask the patient to open his mouth or give him a complicated command. With your right hand, touch your nose and then your left ear. This is complex command. Assessment of repetition. Repetition is assessed by asking the patient to repeat single words, short sentences, or series of words. Here, the assessment of repetition, we definitely, we assess the area of uh, connection between Wernicke and uh, Brock, I mean, are quite fasciculous. Naming, ask the name, common objects like pencils or wristwatch. Reading, silently reading, silently test comprehension of language through the visual system. This is best tested by asking the patient to obey simple written commands. While writing, ask the patient to write his or her name. Ask the patient to write to dictation or copy words and sentences. The clinical features of different types of dysphasia. Broca aphasia. So, it is characterized by, because it is responsible for a production of the speech and it is responsible for a fluency if there is any lesion in the broca. So there will be poor fluency, paraphasia, poor writing, and good comprehension. Clinical features of Wernicke aphasia. So it is area responsible for sensory part of the, or receptive part of the speech. So the fluency usually intact. So it is characterized by normal fluency, jargoning speech, neologisms, paraphasia, poor auditory and reading comprehension. Conductive aphasia, fluency was normal. Comprehension is normal while it is characterized by poor repetition and paraphasia. Anomic aphasia, it is an isolated deficit in the name finding. And then global dysphasia, which means that the lesion hit all language area. The Wernicke, the Broca, and the arcuate fasciculus. So it is characterized by, so it is characterized by poor fluency, poor comprehension, and poor repetition. 
Now, isolation of speech area. It is called transcortical aphasia. There are three types. Transcortical sensory aphasia. When vernica area, when the vernica area is it is disconnected from other speech area or from the other language or from the whole language area. So there will be poor comprehension and equilibrium while there is normal fluency. Please concentrate normal fluency because the area of uh, production which is broken, it is not disconnected, it is still sh functioning. And also, I uh, forget to mention, it also characterized by normal repetition. Please, again, it is character transcortical sensory aphasia. The area of comprehension, which is uh, vernica aphasia, is almost always disconnected from language area. So there will be poor comprehension, echolalia, with normal fluency and normal repetition. Transcortical motor aphasia, here the broca area is disconnected totally from the whole language area. Though, so there will be good comprehension, good repetition, but poor fluency, paraphasia, and echolalia. If the both uh, uh, area of speech, Ligna, uh, Vernica, and Broca, isolated from the core of the language area, there will be features of global aphasia, with the repetition. So there will be poor fluency, poor comprehension, pronounced equilalia, with normal intact good repetition. Now we discuss dementia. Dementia is defined as a syndrome consisting of chronic, acquired, generalized, and progressive impairment in two or more areas of cognition. So, like that is to, يعني, for example, memory, areas of cognition, memory, speech, problem solving, praxis, gnosis, visuospatial orientation, personality, behavior, and integrative sensory and motor function. So, two or more than th those area of cognition, if it is involved, the resulting is the dementia. This impairment of two or more areas of cognition sufficient to interfere with the social activities, relationships, and works, provided that there is absence of impairment of arousal or major non-organic psychiatric disorders like depression or schizophrenia. Mild cognitive impairment is a syndrome considered to be a transient state between normal cognitive function and Alzheimer's disease. Epidemiology, predominantly the dementia is a disorder of later life. Causes, a very large number of neurological disease can cause dementia, but most but most of these are very rare. Alzheimer's disease is by far the most common cause of dementia, comprising between 60 and 80% of cases. While vascular dementia remains the most second, the second most common cause, counting for 10 to 20% of cases. The term vascular dementia encompasses a number of separate disorders, the most common being multi-infarct disease. Of the inherited disorders that may present as dementia, Huntington disease is the most common. While the eighth dementia complex, which develops early in the course of the disease, may be the sole manifestation. Unfortunately, the curable disease still accounts for only a small minority of cases so rapid onset and rapid progression dementia shift the attention to etiologies other than degenerative which include vascular inflammatory metabolic toxic neoplastic and infectious so what are the reversible causes of dementia we can divide it into 
simply into two categories surgical causes and medical causes surgical causes first of three of six those, those three of six normal pressure hydrocephalus chronic subdural hematoma and the brain tumors the other three which are medical causes hypothyroidism vitamin b12 deficiency infection like syphilis and hiv classification of dementia early attempt to classify dementia distinguished between senile and presenal dementia this provide unhelpful since the same pathological processes can afflict the elderly and the relatively young the term cortical and subcortical dementia is used to distinguish between two variants of dementia syndrome the term do not imply that the pathological changes are limited to cortical or subcortical structures characteristic features of subcortical dementia here we we talk about the subcortical area so the involvement of the cortex is a little bit late so the impairment of function is as follows speed of cognitive processing slow down planning a problem solving initiation disproportionately uh, impaired from the onset emotional flatness loss of motivation and lastly the memory the memory involved so the memory impairment present mildly initially the commonest examples are vascular dementia Huntington disease and AIDS dementia complex while the characteristic features of the cortical dementia here the cortex is initial involved so the patient typically presented with severe amnesia personality typically apathetic and inert social withdrawal disinhibition aphasia apraxia visuospatial disorientation the commonest example alzheimer disease normal pressure hydrocephalus and the cruise field jacob disease assessment of suspected dementia there are two questions to be asked when assessing patient with suspected dementia first does the patient fulfill the criteria for a diagnosis of dementia secondly if so what is the likely cause of the dementia now history the temporal profile A careful history is the key to diagnosis. The earliest observed problems like memory loss, personality change, etc. should be established as well as the subsequent course of the illness. The pattern and the rate of decline like insidious, stepwise, fluctuating, rapidly progressive are important as is the need to probe both the patient and the informant for any symptoms suggestive of focal neurological deficits or raised intracranial pressure a particular note should be made of any symptoms suggestive of past cerebrovascular events and of risk factors for thromboembolic disease past medical history of venereal disease and head injury even trivial alcohol intake and all medications must be documented those with other unusual features the possibility of immune compromise from AIDS must be considered. In all patients, the state of health or cause and age of death of first degree relatives should be recorded and the specific inquiries made about any family history of neurological or psychiatric disease. Examination. All patients presenting with dementia require a full neurological examination, clues to possible diagnosis, Cognitive evaluation are also mandatory and should include assessment of orientation, concentration, attention, reasoning, memory, and speech. Investigation. There are routine investigation, full blood count and DSR, biochemical profile, renal function, liver function, and electrolyte, serum vitamin B12, thyroid function, chest radiograph, CT scan and MR the main indication of imaging uh, is to exclude hydrocephalus and the tumors other tests which may be indicated in certain situation and certain cases EEG 
for the diagnosis of Creutzfeldt Jakob disease, CSF examination for infections and meningeal carcinomatosis, immunological test for vascular disease like SLE, serological test for syphilis and HIV, slit lamp examination when there is a concentration of Wilson disease. Slit lamp is important for Kaiser Fleischer ring and cerebral mean level estimation. Specific blood and or urine test for inherited metabolic disorder, cerebral biopsy, and then lastly genetic testing. Thank you very much.